Hello everyone and welcome to Programming in Access 2013, the Advanced Course. My name is Steve Bishop, and in this video we're going to be talking about looping through files and reading them. So this is a continuation of our, uh, our set of courses on the file system object. Uh, the file system object is a very handy class library that allows us to do a lot of different things to the files on our hard drive. But I thought that it would be good uh, to show you guys how you can use that file system object to actually go out and explore on your hard drive and kind of find out what the files are on your hard drive, as well as being able to read some of the contents of those files back to your users. So uh, this is going to be kind of a two-parter video of both the process of how to loop through files and, of course, outputting the text of those files to your user. Now, I'm not going to go so far as to build a form and output the data out to the form. I'm just going to, for right now, output the, uh, the text of our log files to the immediate window. But you guys can take it from there and figure out you know, where you want the output of the data to go to. So let's go back to our database here. And I've modified the write log subroutine just a little bit. Uh, first and foremost, I put that txt stream object and I actually moved it up here and renamed it stream. And so I put it in our declarations for the logging module so that it's available also throughout this entire module. And I just modified the code obviously to use that new stream object instead of txt stream. Then I also went ahead and put all our log files into a logs subfolder underneath our current project so that uh, our logs are going to go into a nicely, you know, uh, a nice little subfolder instead of the main root folder. Uh, and then I modified the code just a little bit to use the file system object to check to make sure the folder existed. And if it didn't, then to go ahead and create it. And, uh, and then I just manually moved some of those files over, some of our logs over to this logs folder. And I went ahead and, and added another uh, log file entry here. So you can see there's another email that I sent out to create another log file a couple days after uh, we did the first video. So we're going to create a read logs uh, subroutine. So we're going to do public sub read logs. And I don't need to pass any parameters to this one because it's just going to look to the logs folder in order to uh, to read those log files. So since we do have, oops, I didn't mean to click on that. Since we do have multiple log files here in our logs folder, we're going to need to be able to loop through this logs folder to read the contents of each one of these text files. Okay. So uh, in order to do that, once again, we're going to need to use the file system object. And the file system object uh, has a uh, get folder method on it. And the output for the get folder you can see is as folder. So we actually need to have some sort of folder object that we can put the contents of this get folder uh, uh, method. We need to put that into some sort of folder object. Okay. So in order to do that, I could once again go ahead and put another uh, folder object here inside of my subroutine, but you know what? I'm going to put it up here in my declarations once again, because again, folders tend to be something that you use frequently. So private folder as folder. And again, that folder class object comes from our, uh, our scripting runtime library. So it should be available once you've got up here in your references, you've got that Microsoft scripting runtime selected. Okay, so get folder is going to now output to folder. So because of that, I need to go ahead and set folder equal to the contents of our get folder action here. So folder path, this is going to be current project path. And we're going to look to our logs subfolder. And I'm going to put the backslash in the variable here. And then we'll go ahead and end our get folder method here. And now that's going to create a folder. Great. So now let's go ahead and we want to get each file within the folder, right? So we're going to do something like this. Uh, since we know that it's going to be a loop statement, right? We need to loop through the contents of our logs folder. So we need some sort of loop statement. And for these, I really like the for each loop. But we, with the for each, you need to specify what the what each iteration 
is going to be a type of. So we need to dim a file as file. Okay, or you could name it obviously whatever you want um, for the for the name of the file. But now we're going to do for each file in folder files. Okay, because there's a container on that folder object called files, which contains all of the files inside of the folder. And so we can loop through the collection of files on folder and, uh, and, and put out, you know, each one of those files into this file object. And then we can use that file object inside of our loop statement here. So, okay, so then we're going to do next. Now for each file we're going to once again need to iterate through the contents of the folder or of the of that file. So here we've got our log file and we need to basically go line by line inside of the file. And this means we're going to need to once again have our stream object open up the contents within that text file. So we're going to need another looping statement. Uh, so this is going to be uh, do until and actually before we could do that we actually need to set the contents up I'm sorry so we need to do set stream equal to and now we can use the file system object once again to open a text file and that open text file method we just need to pass in the file name as string and that we can use the file dot path oops file path the file path gives us the entire path and file name with it. Uh, and what kind of do we want to do? Well, we just need to read it. We don't need to write to it. Uh, do we want to create it? No, we don't really need to create it. Uh, and we want to use the try state use default because that's the same one that we used when we created the files. And remember, it's going to put it out as a text stream, right? So this open text file method creates a text stream, and so we're putting that into this stream object. Okay, so let's go ahead and close that one up. And now we can loop through our stream object. So we're going to do do until stream. And you'll see that there is this at end of stream, which is going to be either true or false. And for each current line, it's going to be false. But once it reaches the end of the text, fi text file, then it will trigger this to be true. So at end of stream will become true. So we can loop through our text file until we see that end, end of stream or the at end of stream property is true. Then we can go ahead and issue our loop for our do until. And now what we need to do is we need to debug print because this is just going to be the command I use to output the contents of that text file. But here you could do whatever you want to. So if you've got a a list box and you want to add it to the contents of your list box you could do that or, or if you wanted to uh, use a select uh, or, or a, a insert into statement in order to put the contents into a, a, uh, a table if you wanted to whatever you want to do I'm just going to do the debug print so that it displays down here in our immediate window but we're going to get the contents of the stream so it's going to be debug print stream and now we're going to read the read line. Now, similar to the write and write line, read is just going to read the contents of, the, of that line and then leave the cursor at the end. Read all will actually read the entire contents of the document all the way through. And uh, that could certainly work in this particular case. But I do want to use the read line since we're going to be looping through. And you'll probably want to use the read line as well if you have like a list box that you're writing to or if you want each new line to be a new row in a uh, record set or a new row in a table you're going to want to use the read line because the read line will do a carriage return line feed or move the cursor down to the next uh, to the next row in the text box so read line will move the cursor down one for us and it just outputs this read line command just outputs the the uh, text as string. So this actually outputs, even though it doesn't really tell you this, uh, readline actually comes out as string. So this debug print will output the string result from this readline method on our stream. And that should pretty much do it. So let me go ahead and save that. And you'll notice I don't need to do, as part of this loop, any sort of uh, 
you know, next line statement or anything like that because the read line command actually moves the cursor to the next line. Uh, so it will continue on until it reaches the end of the stream. So let's go ahead and try this. I'm going to go ahead and put a breakpoint here and we'll do read logs. And the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to go create that uh, folder. It's going to set the folder equal to the file system object get folder method where it goes out and gets the logs folder. And now it's going to check for each file in the uh, folder files. It's going to set, it's going to do the open text file method from our file system object. And it's going to get the path name to that file and open it up as a stream object. And then we're going to loop through our stream object. And for each line, we're going to run this stream.readline method. And there you can see it. So on our 9.5, we have the email sent that we did uh, when we were doing our last demonstration. And then next up, we've got line 2. That's unfortunately because I got the cursor marked down there. All right, there we go. And then the next one. So now it moves to the next file in the, in the folder. Uh, and so you can see that the path now, the log file is set to 2015.9.7. So that's going to be uh, this, which is today, right? That's the, that's the log file for today. And inside of it, once again, it's going to start to read the contents of the document. And there's only one entry here, so I hope you really like uh, yeah, here's something I hope you really like. Uh, and it's the end of this, it hits that end of stream for the document, goes to the next for the next file, but there is no other file in that folder. And there you go. So we have just outputted the contents of both of those text documents to the immediate window using the get folder method, right? The get folder method on our file system object. And that sets, uh, sets up our folder. And then for each file inside of that folder, we went ahead and read the contents of those files to the stream and then output the contents of that stream one line at a time using the read line method. And uh, so there you go. If you have any questions about this process, please feel free to drop me your questions in the comments section below this video. And as always, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Thank you.